Hi guys, it's Ryan with another guide this week on running tags and other expensive models. Why am I doing this, you might ask. Well, a few months ago, I got a comment on one of my videos asking about how do you go about running these tag lists? And while I always say run tag lists, well, I'm a panel player that doesn't really do tags much. Maybe like a lot of you, I think tags are great models and profiles, but it feels like a lot of eggs in one basket and you're gonna have to support them and really a 70 points model becomes more like 110 points once you've got all your support in the list. And sometimes that just sounds like faff, but I feel like now, especially as I move into playing a little bit more, I feel like I'm increasingly missing a trick here, especially in Pan Oceania. So to compensate from this, I've done some reading and playing, and today I'm gonna talk about what a tag is, what their roles are, what their weaknesses are, and how to support and mitigate the weaknesses. Additionally, I'll talk about those 50 plus point models and how they differ from tags, but are very similar in nature. But before we begin, remember to like and subscribe for more. So what is a tag and why should you take these models? I mean, I feel a bit silly spelling out what a tag is, but often new players can be like, I want to play the big models, but what are they? Well, a tag is a troop category unto itself and stands for tactical armoured gear. In its simplest form, it's Infinity's main artillery slash fire supports piece. It is a large, durable and powerful model that often fills the role of your list's hammer. Tags do have a few restrictions as a result. They can't go prone, they have quite large bases and are susceptible to a few animal types such as EM and the possession status. But in game, there is very little, if anything else, that can match its firepower and durability. That is why you take a tag, firepower. So we have figured out what a tag is, but there is a little bit of categorization to them. Now, before that, this all comes from Dark Border on the Infinity Forums and their primer on tactical armor gears. It is for N3 and Pan Oceania, but it's very much still applicable and worth a read. The link is in the cards. So two categories, we have light tags and main battle tags. Light tags are those who tend to be around silhouette six, arms five to seven, and usually, but not always, three wounds. They aren't always armed with HMGs like their heavier counterparts and come with a broad range of roles ranging from basically big heavy infantry like geckos and drones, snipers like the other drone in the bull track, assault tags like the Surf, Teak, Blue Wolf and Oyuri, and finally camel tags like the Sphinx and Ulan. There is a lot of breadth here ranging from the very basic Shirkush to the very weird Stigmata. Light tags do not have a set role other than being big, bulky and pretty okay in a gunfight. They do still get that BS attack plus one damage and tack aware, so they can be pretty agile in position as necessary. Main battle tags are a little more cohesive. Main battle tags are those tags who are at least BS 14, silhouette seven or eight, arm eight or higher, three wounds with at least an AP HMG or a hypermagnetic rail cannon. If it hasn't got burst an AP, it's not a main battle tag. Well, they're still fairly broad, ranging from the basic Squallow, Lizard and Raisho to the defensive Yotam, Guja and Gator, and finally the wild and unmatched Cutter and Avatar. These are truly unmatched in firepower with damage 16 armor piercing and arm 8 plus, which means that the only thing that will withstand the attack is another tag, ridiculously high armored troopers or AP immune models. We'll talk about the true weaknesses of tags in a minute, but first the roles beyond being a firepower piece. So what are the roles of a tag? Well, as mentioned earlier, it's firepower of some time, although that's usually down to the specific tag as tags are hammers pretty much exclusively. Every tag in some way is going to be used to brute force or finesse around something to kill it dead. Main battle tags are more likely to take straight fights since they can rely on their high armor, damage and BS to brute force a fight. They do sometimes have neat tricks like the cutter's hidden deployment and camouflage so it can safely move around and pick better fights. And the same with the avatar and its mid minus six. The marut can nullify mimeticism and smoke threats with its visors as well. Squallows, gators, lizards can do it with mine dispenser, grenade launchers and melee but they are here to leverage that multi heavy machine gun. Light battle tags do the same thing except they use their broad range of skills to do so. Those with mobility skills, like the Seraph and the Teak Balan, can vault, jump and climb their way up some scenery to get good angles and ranges on models and then blast them. Stealthier models like the Ulan, Sphinx and Oyuri can walk up much closer to enemy lines and blast them that way. 
Basic tags like the Drone, Gecko and Jakush are closer to your main battle tags in practice as without the mobility they kind of just slug it to position then fight what they need to to get there. Fortunately their cost does offset the lack of tools they bring. I know I'm being a bit broad but there are just so many tags that it's a bit hard to give a definitive ABC recipe and that's if that even works for infinity. Really it's a roundabout way to say tags are big bots that can look somewhat after themselves. Well there are a lot of weaknesses but overall don't be precious with tags. They're here to be loud, proud and in charge and people will respond to tags in three ways. Their own tag, a strong core linked ARO piece to slow you down or null deployment. Those last two benefit tag the most since we can move our list around a linked ARO piece on a good table and we can act with impunity to some extent when our opponent null deploys. So the next role is that a tag is not only an offensive hammer but it can be a bit of a defensive pain in the ass to deal with for all the reasons that make them a pain offensively. Although this is a little more risky due to the tag's weaknesses, tags are usually at least arm six and usually three wounds, which means that can be a nightmare to be unconscious. Not only that, they have damage 15 or 16 AP weapons. Really, it's not something you want to fight unless you can confident you can kill it quickly or without hassle. So if you can position the tag right, overlook the right lane, maybe it's only 24 inches long and stick one on suppressive fire or something, you can make a lane pretty hard to get through for your opponent. Or you can stick them on longer ranges with only one dice. Tags not always, but preferably do also have template weapons for defense as well. So if you get bum rushed, you may be able to save yourself before you get tagged into melee. Finally, all tags are specialists, or well, sort of. All tags, bar a few, have pilots that, yes, even in Pan-Oceania with Whip 11, can push buttons. The exception to this being operators and those with the escape systems or the stigmata, who herself is a specialist. These are usually whip 12 or 13, so it means you can grab an objective with a tag or use the tag to kill a bunch of things, then pop them out and park your model on the objective and basically say, come at me. Obviously only do this if you can support the attack, don't overextend yourself, but in the pinch that means you can still do the mission and not just play Annihilation with them. So tags sound fantastic, I'm sure, but there are probably a few reasons you're not already running them. And well, that's probably very valid as they are pretty susceptible to a good number of things. So in the following section, I'll cover the weaknesses and what support you can bring to mitigate or negate these weaknesses. So the first major weakness is hacking, and that's the one everyone thinks about, especially with t total control. But total control isn't the only way a hacker can mess up a tag. It has four programs that make a tag less threatening. Two soft killing the tag, one stealing the tag, and the last one to buff AROs against the tag. So, how do hackers project this threat? Because right now, it's only their zone of control. Well, there are a couple of ways. Almost every 13 point jump with a hacking device can sneak off a program at a tag that walks through a repeater. As such, repeaters and a hacker or two are usually seen as a pretty common anti-tag toolkit. It also allows every hacker to take a pot shot at you, which is not fun. This can create swaths of the table that, that unmarker state tags can't move through and thus limits what your big expensive models can do, which you might then think, why did I bring that? Following that, pictures are also not fun for tags because that just delivers those repeaters to roughly where you want them, and as such, it can bring the hacking directly to you, right on the tag, turn one, getting spotlight. Right, so apparently hackers can reach me anywhere or zone out the midfield and do really bad things to the tag. What are they actually going to do to me? Well, there are four options or three in spotlight. If I was being purely panel brained individual, then I'd maybe spotlight a tag and then face to face it with my own tag or HMG Harris. Realistically, you're going to be hit with oblivion, which isolates you on a failed save of its damage 16, burst two, AP shot, burst one and reactive obviously. This is a pretty threatening to most tags as they tend to only be BTS six. And as such, without firewall, you're looking at 14s to save it. Alternatively, they could carbonate you, which is a damage 13 DA burst 2, which is not bad since it immobilized BU, which means all you can do is reset on a minus 3, which sucks a lot and opens you up to unopposed shooting. Finally, the one everyone is afraid of, total control. If your opponent is smart, they'll just fling this out on reactive to try and steal your tag. It's a damage 16 burst 1 DA shot, and it's not very good against a BTS-6 resetting. 
tag. But if you fail your save, your tag is possessed, which is an all state and considered an enemy trooper. And from my experience, they will use it to demolish your list instead of using their own tag. You can steal it back with your own total control or a command token in your next states phase. But still, it's like one of those four ways or something that you can effectively go straight to dead in the game. Hackers represent a solid threat to your tag, but it's not an insurmountable one for a few reasons. So how do we counteract hackers? Well, a couple of ways. First, we use the tag to kill the hackers, which isn't always doable. No, the real way to deal with hackers are a couple of options. First is to bring your own hackers and hack back your own tag to try and zone out and kill or isolate enemy hackers, which is a very tricky thing to balance. Hacker on hacker violence is hard and no factions besides maybe combined army and nomads can really just start brawling like bolts in a sniper tower. You might pop off an isolation against a hacker which is easier and turns off their hacking device, but that's if you win the face to face roll. The other option to help counteract hackers is to bring along an engineer and a palbot, which essentially does two things. If your tag is totally controlled, you keep the palbot in base to base contact before the possession and you just sandbag the tag with CC. If the hacker decides to isolate or immobilize your tag, you can just walk the palbot or engineer up to the tag and make it feel better. Oh hey, that's what, one to three orders to soft lock my tag? Oh hey, would you look at that, that's one order to kill the repeater and one more to bring the tag back to life. The board is reset and that tag is back in the game. Another way to neuter hackers is to prune their repeater network. So going out of your way to kill or isolate repeater carriers, REMs and any hackers with forward deployment. There are lots of ways to do this but warbands and skirmishers tend to be really good at this as they are both unhackable and either won't live long enough to get guided missile strike or just jump back into marker state if threatened. Super jump and climbing plus also really help as does stealth for obvious reasons as you can just peel out the fast panders and morans wherever they hide. Weirdly the tags with super jump are pretty good at this thanks to the new way super jump works. Finally, evil hackers and tin pots help mitigate hackers a fair bit. Hacking is oddly like CC where there isn't much in the way of modifiers and mitigation of modifiers. You have mods from programs, probably the most common, firewalls and EMC hacker minus X. So if you can start throwing minuses at your opponent's hacking attempt, it gets worse and more manageable. So the minuses here is specifically the one from firewall from fairy dust, which benefits either all tags, rems or HI on the table with a firewall minus three which is nice if you can't link with tin bots. Firewall and tag essentially gives it hacking slash comms attack cover, implying a negative of whatever it's noted with to the attempt, which is great, and it reduces the damage by three. This is really useful as oblivion against a BTS six tag with whip 13 resetting goes from a 46% chance to succeed to a 28% chance to succeed. Then that's from a whip 13 hacker. Obviously evil hackers do have downsides, but linking a tin bot or rolling better on the lieutenant roll helps a lot when dealing with hackers. So yeah, hackers represent one of the biggest threats to your tag, but they're a threat that can be mitigated. Warbands and melee are some of the best ways to kill or tie up a tag as all but a few are really bad in melee. Warbands also tend to at least have AP CCWs and smoke and as such can approach most tags uncontested and slowly but surely peel wounds from the tag or just stop it from moving. The tags that are not awful at melee or have MSV you can't really do this to since if they survive the berserk roll or just shoot the warband on the way in and then they can slap you with that high damage DA or explosive weapons and probably killing the warband or maybe losing one of its three wounds. Besides that, if you can get a Galwegian or Galwegian equivalent into melee and just leave it there, then the tag can't see outside of melee so you can just leave it alone and do other things with all those points sitting there uselessly mocking your opponent. So yeah, melee and warbands can either lock down a tag or force it to trade into a model that costs one fifth or even as little as one tenth of the tag's cost. So how do we counter warbands and things meleeing our tags? Well, there's a couple things. Ironically, like hackers, the answer to melee and warbands is to bring your own warband and melee unit. Specifically, we want to use them as corner guards or screens to prevent the opponent getting guys to the tag. Anything with multiple wounds and templates is pretty good at this since they can be harder to shift. Patchers are a great example of this. Skirmishers can also effectively scream out warbands if played correctly, either using shock weapons or rifles to shoot outside template weapons, drop mines or deployable repeaters to debuff or stop those coming in for attack. Skirmishers who have good CC can also come in and save tags and other important pieces from being caught in melee. 
Yes, it does waste a few orders, but it can be worth it if your tag is primed to do a lot of damage. Smoke, Viz mods, and marker states really mess up a tag. I'm lumping them together because they all stem from the same issue. Outside the Marut, which is only MSV2, tags do not have visors or six sense. As such, smoke can very easily trip them up. Mimetism is unmitigatable modifiers now, and surprise attack against tags is just another big win. Nine times out of ten, the tag will only be getting its plus three from range, which cover will usually eat up. Six cents means the tag can get shot in the back or shot through smoke, which is doubly bad if the shooter has AP, such as the Marut or the Yaogat. Smoke can also just be thrown on the tag and warbands walked into melee or have an SAS do the mission. Fortunately, the counter to this in your list is thanks to MSV, mine layers, and corner guards. MSV2, either on your tag or other troopers, can deny smoke rolls and even movement in some cases. Knowing what and when to activate and position are three very key skills in Infinity. Mine layers and corner guards can basically block out camo and smoke from getting to you, as mines don't care about line of fire from smoke and a template will ignore the smoke if it becomes contested. Corner guards with six sense or visors like the Taiga, the Chassis or the Karu can really stop or slow down things that would try and use smoke or stealth to sneak up and bring down a tag. Lots of AP, explosive and EM ammo is kind of obvious. These kill or disable your tag pretty quickly. So if your opponent has a lot of them like Ariadna, it makes attacking and defending with the tag a bit more prickly. Sure, you probably win the face-to-face -face roll, but it makes it much more riskier if you fail, you're more likely to lose a wound despite your higher armor. If these weapons get the active turn drop on you, it's obviously going to hurt. EM is largely non-lethal except the CCWs, but it is AP plus DA ammo that isolates and immobilizes bees on a fail roll, meaning that it will make a tag only be able to act on a reset of a minus 12. And if you're a panel tag without engineers, it's basically dead. Now, if that's an EM CCW, that's also a wound as well. I feel stupid for spelling out that good ammo effectively kills things, but it's important to understand the threats your tags face. Remember, unit profiles are open information and should always be on the courtesy list. Of course, that may be obfuscated by hollow mask, but what you see on the table is public information. Couple weapons to keep in mind. Riot stoppers are kinda good. Tags usually dodge awfully but have high fizz, so they are usually saving on sevens or less. Blitzens are really nice with EM on HMG range bands. Panzerfaust too for being AP plus explosive. Missile launchers and packs obviously, of course, being AP plus explosive and burst for AP weapons. So to deal with this, it's more of ensuring you're smart with your AROs and what tools you're presenting and using and when best to use the tag. And hell, if you cock up the roll, just use an engineer to bring the tag back. Other tags are a great threat to your tag as well. It's why tags are so popular. You tend to take tags to crack through your opponent's ARO pieces or anything with high armor, good BS or high wounds. That sounds familiar, right? You take your tag to deal with tag-like threats. Now, some tags are better at hunting other tags, such as those with mimeticism, the ability to outrange, outgun, or outshoot another tag. Such anti-tags include the Ulan with its camo and surprise attack and its DA plus AP on its Führerbach, the Cutter and the Sphinx with hidden deployment and min minus six, the Avatar with min minus six, and the Marut against mimetic tags thanks to its MSV2. Almost every tag can tangle with other tags, but not every tag will want to. To counter this, well I mean you could just bring your own tag, or literally anything I've just talked about above. Finally, the last weakness that you might not have thought about, and that's the list itself. Why? Well, a unit without a list to feed it orders cannot do anything. Sure, a tag generates two or more orders, but there's not a lot you can do with that. As such, when you're running a tag, you want to make sure you don't get the list swept out from under you. You still need a full complete list alongside the tag or else you're not going to do much. An example of this is the avatar list where yeah the avatar is the key piece of this but all the other parts of the list come together to help make it a monster. Like camo specialists, noctifers, an ungodly amount of warbands to protect the avatar who can just pew pew your threats away. Conversely if you start to take out that really action packed list you slowly but surely starve the monster out. Yes he has four orders but if he wants to do something like push a button, that's only four orders to haul his Silhouette 7 ass onto an objective, and that's a little too close for comfort. 
So how do you stop the list itself being a hindrance to attack? Well, that's pretty complex and comes down to learning your faction and the tools available within it. This isn't a call to get good. More practice makes purpose in finding the balance in the list with what you're comfortable with in your meta. I'm still trying to find my preferred groove to work with tags, but I have a feeling there will be a lot more warbands in my tag lists from how I utilize big fire teams and the lists around them. Non-tag big models are a little different from tags and consist of the big lads like Shishkin, Achilles, Mendoza, Hacktow, Knights of the Holy Sepulchre. These are 50 plus point models that you really want to use effectively since like tags you want to get the most from your points and you want to protect them or you're wasted a fifth or sixth of your list. So what is the main difference between running a tag and running one of these big expensive non-tag lads? Well, usually unless it's something like a Chatteroid, Achilles, it's less durable than a tag, but it's also harder to deal with because they can go prone, they can't be possessed, if they're not heavy infantry, they can't get hacked. These non-tag, non sell non at 5 ones excluded, are also far more agile because of their smaller bases, meaning they don't take 2.5 inches of movements to get round a corner. You can also get into panic room and buildings in general, which makes you much harder to attack which is its own form of durability, as you don't need to sit outside a building and hope that you can hide your big and tall base. These non-tag big models can usually be linkable as well, which changes the game a bit more. Linking Joan or Shishkin makes them some of the best shooters in the game in regards to just raw ballistic skill, with 16 in an impure core, or 18 in a pure crusade link. Also costs something like 130 points though. Usually, however, you'll see them in fire teams of all sizes depending on the list, with the goal of maximising the benefits like ballistic skill, burst and sixth sense, while minimising manoeuvrability loss from the fire teams. Shavasti lists often do this with a four-man Nox team with Shiskin, and Joan Jews or Harrises to suppress her frenzy. Doctors and engineers, screen elements are often used in these fire teams to further get the models where they need to go. The unknown ranger Harris of a Patcher and a Varangian is a key example of this. The unknown ranger is good in melee, but melee is a coin toss, so having a second dice or some other chump do it is far safer. Speaking of, these models tend to be pretty decent in melee, not always, but quite often. This makes it harder for warbands to trade up against. Usually they also have some way to negate warbands with templates or multi-spectral visors. And they still need a little garden, but often even within 16 inches, the shooting tends to be some of the best. Finally, and somewhat hopefully quite often outside of at least the aspects, Achilles, the Azura and the guard units, these tend to be far cheaper than tags, which means it's much easier to squash secondary and even tertiary pieces into the list. I've run a list with Mendoza, a large attacking core, two trends with full hacker support, and I think I had about 15 orders in military orders, which is wild. With a tag in that similar list, I had to drop a trend to fit an engineer and a palabot. And remember, the cheapest tag out there is 51 points. The most expensive silhouette too is something like 70 points, but that's like Achilles who's in a class of his own. The Unknown Ranger is 47, Mendoza is 56, and Shishkin Red Fury, 54 points. Let's recap. Tags are the big things of Infinity and are a defining part of the meta pre-reinforcements, but they can be very vulnerable if not supported and absolutely devastating if correctly utilised. Hacking is your biggest threat outside of tags who can be countered if you clip and prune their repeater coverage and hackers themselves. If you do this before the tag moves into the midfield, you can use its HMG to do a lot of work. If your expensive non-tag is hackable, the same rules apply. Warmans and melee is a dangerous place for tags to be because if you're good at it, it's swingy. If you're bad at it, it's not good. Having screening elements and multi-spectral visors, you can maybe even counter this threat before it even comes in. Tags can kill damn near everything, but a lot of things slap back fairly hard. So avoiding multi-dice ammo is key and keeping engineers and doctors nearby to pick up the fallen pieces when it's worth the orders to do so. Although a lot of people dispute that tactic. Finally, the best way to support these big models is to be aware of the weaknesses of the list and the strength of it beyond its big guns. If you know your limitations and you know what to expect from your opponents, then you should have a good framework to work from. 
and that was my video on running tags and other expensive models, their weaknesses and how to mitigate them. I hope you learned something from this, and if you did, remember to like and subscribe. It helps me so much. Thank you very much for watching.